Let's tackle that once we get to it. Uh, open up another relay chess session. Start a new game. Sorry for the lack of an introduction. Um, okay, well, it looks playable. That's cool. That's pretty spiffy. Boop. Alright, so... What I'd like to be able to do would be checkmate somehow. How do I do this? Where's the mate? Oh, this could be entertaining. I've never tried it this way. Alright, let's put the knight over here. So that's not check. And this is mate. Beautiful. Alright. Well, that was playable. Uh, we're missing the player names, but that aside, that seemed to work. Um, so... I know it's said that I'm coding today. Um, we might not actually get to doing any coding, depending how that go Oh. We got one notification. Uh, right. Right, right, right. So let me go back, reauthorize there, so my bot is authorized. Now go back here, log in with Lee Chess, authorize Relay Chess here. So we're both logged in. Cool beans. Um, new game. Boop. Uh, apparently I'm still missing player names here. Um, ain't that fancy. So, I'm missing player names, but the game is playable. Um, so yeah, we are going to need to take a look at some of this code here and figure out what's going on in all this goodness. Um, so let's hop aboard. Uh, relay chess. Tail last 40 lines or so. And we see here's where we created our 10-2 game. And we see just how this presented itself. We got the game clock, we got the pieces we're able to move, um, uh, yeah, I think this is sufficient. This shows what I changed last time to get where we're at. Um, I'm not sure this change to utils.js has any effect. I'm pretty sure it doesn't, in fact, so well, no sense changing it back, because at least I understand how that works. Um, so, what is it that I want to troubleshoot? I would like to be able to see a player name and a player rating here. And evidently, um, I don't have all that. Uh, instead, I got something else. So let's take a look at handle games.js. I should have got the line. Oh, the line number's right there. It's 199 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. I don't think I'm going to be clipping this later or highlighting it or whatever. I think this is just me goofing around, having tested both anonymous and authenticated gameplay. Um, so we got title, display name, rating, and time. And I'm pretty sure display name was not set in the other context. Um, if not color, wait, the user's not playing in this game. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Well, that's cool. 
Um, but yeah, either way, what I'm looking for, I guess what gets admitted to the players only needs to contain these attributes and doesn't really need to contain IDs or anything fancy like that. Um, I'm learning the hard way never to take on anything this ambitious uh, without understanding what I'm doing. Um, Cause this got pretty complicated. Uh, let's see. Get diff head minus one. Should show what I changed last time. Yeah, it was game.js that I had to change. And we see that display name is not set in that context, if I'm seeing correctly. Perhaps I'm not. Line 16. Uh, yeah, display name is not set. So... Um... Well... And this is where my question's about, do I need both a name and a display name attribute? Um, really start to get invoked. Um, so it's probably easiest that I add an attribute and call it display name. It's second easiest that I do something saner and recognize that an ID and a name aren't the same thing. A name is what you call somebody, an ID is an identifier. Um, so display name is like the most confusing anachronism ever. Um, so why don't I do something sane here? And just say dot name. Um, now it looks like that other context also did not set up um, ratings. If I saw correctly, both players had a zero rating, and perhaps that's something that's supposed to be filled in. Um, yeah, rating is not populated here. Okay. Uh, this file is what defined it, de what defined create game, not defined did, it's defined. Um, so, um, right. We have objects and we create a new game. But I was curious what constructs the um, uh, the objects that are passed to create game. Um, let's hop into the socket server folder and see. Uh, it's invoked from game.js, which is invoked from uh, handle seeks. Create game random attempts to assign random colors. Though it's not particularly smart at doing the random color assignment. Um, yeah, now that should be a fully qualified user object obtained from the logged in users array um, which is the in memory cache which I think contains fully formed users so oh sorry no there's one thing here where based on the socket connection we call get server user by socket um, but was that the same thing I was suggesting we get rid of? No, it was not. Get database user by ID it was something I'd proposed disposing of. And I think I still agree with 
that I don't need this. Nothing consumes it, so I should dispose of it. Um, but this git server user by socket, using the socket identifier as well as the cache of logged in users, should be sufficient because this is a fully formed user in the logged in users array. Um, so I just scrubbed um, this by ID thing, uh, which I'm pretty sure I don't need. So let's just be done with that. Looks good. Um, so what I need now um, is during the game creation to retain the rating of the player the, for which we are creating the game. So that's game.js. Um, where the heck did game.js go in my back buffer? I just wanted to verify that I was typing it right, but uh, I had to type it all out. Uh, rating is not mentioned here. Uh, I can't believe I'm having to do this. In terms of um, just how brittle it is. Oops. Um, that's part of why I more look forward to um, trying this in a new language than trying to maintain this particular project. But the code does work. So, oops, I popped up one too many levels. Uh, does that, yep, that's going. All right, so if I re-authenticate, uh, force refresh, Log in with Leechess, authorize. Do likewise in my secondary window. Force refresh, log in with Leechess, authorize. All right, we don't need that window open. Don't need that window open. And now Godel can create a game. And I can accept the seek. And oh my god, we appear to have a game on our hands, assuming I remember how to move the pieces. Alright, so... Wow, I'm forgetting how chess pieces move. I'm so excited. That's pretty great. Alright, so... It occurred to me that I can move the king out that way. Which is pretty great. You don't normally think about it. Um... Yeah. That's definitely check. Okay, how do I checkmate in this kind of game? It's never simple. This game is always complex. Um, I'm always trying to find some new innovative way to checkmate the White King. I think I found one here though. I think this works. Oh, I can't move the knight away for what I'm plotting here. Uh, this is checkmate? No, because the bishop can take the knight. Check. Right, so the king can't move. Bishop takes knight is forced here. So I learned something that, like, that properly detects that that's not mate. Which is pretty cool. Um, that's what I think this, that's not mate. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, checkmate is difficult. Um, here, let's go bury the queen. And now with the queen buried, uh, knight of six should be mate. No, there's king takes e5. No, there's not, because that's protected. So, cool. All right. That's good. That's progress. That's amazing progress, honestly. Oh. Sorry, you get to hear the lobby music unless I forget to mute it. Okay, we don't need the lobby music raving in the background. Um, so
So, where is it that casual versus rated is defined? Because I want to try re-enabling rated games. Um, prep rated. Game dot rated. All right. Um, I'm gonna attempt to re-enable rated play on the server because people love that stuff. Um, it gives people confidence that the site is working, even if I don't have full confidence in the rating system. And probably at some point, we'll need to reset the ratings. Um, people do love their ratings, so. Um, mm -hmm. Where do I go to re-enable this? This dot rated equals rated. All right. Uh, create game random. It's from handle seeks. Okay, rated is defined as what? Game seeks ID dot rated. All right. So where do we create the new seek? and define its ratedness. Uh, new seek. Ah, oh, great. Um, yeah, if I used strong types, I'd be able to more readily identify where it is that the seek gets created. That's funny. Uh, create. create game. Nope, that's just me logging. That said, um, I'm going to borrow this log statement because at some point we do create a seek somewhere. And that should be notated with create in, its, in the description of its function somewhere. Um, new game. All right, new ratings, new seek, under handle seeks. Oh, well, uh, oh, is this it? I thought this is a callback. Socket on, okay. Oh, we are logging a thing. Okay, so I'm not completely nuts. Um, if rated is not in the request, oh, then that's an invalid request. So the requester determines whether or not they are requesting a rated game. We're trusting client side code to provide valid values. Great. Um, oh, I'm sorry, no, we are validating here. After having done the trusting that they've provided the rated parameter, now we check if they have a name that starts with anonymous. And if they do, then they can't have a rated game. All right, so... Uh, where the heck was rated referenced? Um... Besides the socket server, yeah, HTML, JS, app, etc. Um, so it's got to be here somewhere. Oh, HTML, JS, app, lobby controller. Uh, rated equals. Uh, equals not anonymous user. So this is the thing which determines whether or not um, we request a rated game. Right now, all non-anonymous users request rated games, or at least they should, by virtue of this. But my definition of anonymous user must be incorrect. <sighs> so... Where do I go to fix that? What are my data structures? How do I know? 
Well, I should look for references to this anonymous user. Um, grab anonymous user under HTML JS. All right, so that's defined by the relay chest service. which defaults this parameter or property to true and perhaps under some circumstances changes it to false. If local storage user token is not undefined and is not null, then parse the user token, obtain its name and display name, and um, why am I... What is this even a function for? This couldn't be the login function. This is just... Yeah, this is... I am so confused. This code is such a hodgepodge of mixed metaphors. Um, I am developing an appreciation for people who work on banking systems and use such lovely languages as COBOL. I can only imagine uh, what they endure. So that said, um, user token, I'm so confused. First of all, why is the client responsible well, no, the client theoretically should have the ability. Why not just scrap this and rewrite it? The answer is because I'm not a web developer. I have done literally nothing other than this uh, in terms of actual web development. That's a bad reason, but it's the reason I'm going with so far. Um... So I didn't feel like trying to learn OAuth 2 in addition to uh, learning just how to do run a simple basic web app thing. Even though this is super complicated and it's not that simple, I felt it'd be easier to, like, yeah, I don't know. Um... I have actually made some headway on um, reading through, what was it? I'm drawing a blank. Um, long term, I want to use Phoenix Framework and Elixir and all that functional programming uh, wonderfulness and languages in that sort of category. Um, and to that end, I have been reading um, the theory that's in support of such languages because this is what people who have developed in such constructs advise that I do, is that I get a solid grasp of the theory and only then try to start implementing um, software. So. I am making headway on that. It's quite slow, but um, it'll eventually happen. But in the interim, I'm still excited uh, to try to help the original developer of this code base make this viable. Um, plus, the rules for this game are super complicated, and I did try in C++ to implement them and struggled badly with it. So I'm excited that uh, they actually went forward and implemented all the chess rules for this. Um, but yeah, having gone through this experience, uh, um, it's super tempting to throw it all aside and start over. I just need to... Uh, I want to do that in the correct language, and I don't have the time and energy and so forth right now to do all that. As crazy as that sounds compared to what we're doing here, um, that's my estimation of things. 
Um, Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, like once you have the correct abstraction and the correct algorithm, it's pretty straightforward. Um, um, I don't know that that makes it any easier, but. Um, I mean, I've written like half a dozen different variants in Stockfish. The board representation isn't the problem. Um, I mean, I wrote my own chess program and represented the board like five different ways or something like that throughout the evolution of my own chess program. The actual data representation isn't the problem. It's just that this stuff's complicated. Um. I guess the, the representation did pr um, make it cumbersome to work with. Academically, I knew what to do with it, but um, that, as a practical matter, it was just challenging to implement. I guess it wasn't a challenge from the perspective of understanding how to do something with the representation and expand the representation, but trying to do so in a way that was ELO neutral for other variants was challenging. Um, Anyway, it's like C++ wasn't designed for the sort of aspect-oriented programming that we're trying to achieve here, although JavaScript isn't really suited for that either. Um, so... <sighs> what was I looking for before? Um, I forget. I was up since like 2 a.m. this morning. So, pardon me if I'm forgetting like what I'm doing here. Oh yeah, no, I don't dispute that. Although I think we're making progress. And I apologize if that flusters people other than myself to watch this. If it's too frustrating for people to watch, I could do this offline. I get that people would rather that I start over, but um, I don't have the time and energy and mentality and all that to handle that right now. Uh, I want to see this through to at least a minimum viable release. Um, and so I think that only two things remaining for this minimum viable release are one, re-enabling rated play, two, implementing the logout button, and then just releasing it. And then we can start over. Uh, at least that's the current plan until the original developer comes by and decides to change that all and you know, at which point I might just hand the project back to him and say, have fun with it. I don't know. Hey, what's up? So I'm trying to implement rated play. I could just make all the games rated. I don't know. Like, I don't need the UI to decide whether or not the games are rated. That's something that we could decide server-side, since client-side there's no control to manipulate the ratedness of the games. But the data structures are here 
and they demand that the UI set the rated attribute of a seek um, based on whether or not the user's been um, auth authorized. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be back around sometime. Am I going to stream chess today? Um, let's see what time is it. It is past 10. I woke up at 2. So I've been awake... How many hours is that? 20? I might not get to chess today. Um... Maybe, well, I don't know, maybe over the weekend. Um, so, where do I go to re enable the rated play here? I can actually just diff this to the history of the file. Hey, uh, we are programming the Relay Chess site. Let me drop the link for it here, because it actually kind of works now. Um, so, um, yeah, we're coding the back end to, for, um, what was the latest problem that was reported? Uh, most recently it was reported anonymous play wasn't working. Last stream I fixed that. To so this stream I fixed the game display for both. Well, I didn't verify that for anonymous play the display displays it correctly, but I think it will. Um, but what I need to do is figure out how. Oh, this is the login function that's setting anonymous user to true or to false. But I don't think this login callback is called anymore now that we're using OAuth 2, which authorizes with a different mechanism. So what does this mean? Hmm. How do I introspect whether or not the player is already authenticated? socket equals io dot connect so we attach to the socket server I'm trying to remember how this worked I did get some help from Debo earlier months ago with this he was very generous and kind and helpful um, once I explained my plight to him that there was an app server and a socket server and that there was no built-in compatibility for all the Node.js frameworks we're using put together um, that could also leverage his OAuth 2 uh, authorization mechanism API that was present on the Leechus server. So he was very kind and helpful and then explain yeah there are valid reasons to have separate app server and socket server so we don't need to change that you've came up with a way to pass the authorization from the app server to the socket server so this client should be able in theory to know whether um, the socket on which it's connected to the socket server is an authorized user socket or a non-authorized user. Um, oh, excellent. That's good that anonymous play displays correctly. That's a relief. Um, So, uh, I want to say this, these login and logout don't work. Um, user update. What the hell is user update? Oh, this must be an update to the user's list in the left column of the lobby. 
Um, I just don't know. I have to refamiliarize myself with what's going on here. <sighs> Join game, set up game, start game, etc. Those are all, yeah, these are all activities with the socket server. Um, one of these, uh, I'm sorry, that's seek update. Why did I thought it? No, there's user update and seek update. Hmm. But yeah, this login, I'm pretty sure, is not consumed anymore. Ditto for the logout. Which means that up here. So that's the browser's local storage, um, which could contain a user token. But no, the session token is isolated from the JavaScript, so the JavaScript can't leak that. But I'm needing to look for a supplementary token of sorts to know that I am indeed authorized. And if I'm authorized, then we do this stuff. Um, oh, I'm actually logging local storage dot user token but um, supposing that user token were populated and this is client side code so I could look in my browser and see what it's logging but supposing that were anything other than null and or undefined um, then when I go to create the game wait this is not the game creation factory where was my game creator? Var data. Var data is just a data object living in my browser within the scope of this relay chess controller class that controls my session. Sessions are server side, but controls the whatever it is that I'm living on the lifespan of my client. Um, so I thought this class did create games. There's a seek update, but is there not a seek create? No. Okay. So this is not what I was looking for. I was just looking, I guess, for what sets the anonymous user attribute. Um, an anonymous user is defined based on whether or not user token is set in local storage. And user token is not set, and the way we know that is that I've looked at the app server code and it doesn't set user token. That was something that changed when we switched to OAuth 2. Oh, but now I've set it again. Um, and I've set the name attribute and the display name attribute to leech us user ID and leech us user username respectively. Um, starting to regret using the leech us user ID. Hmm. As some kind of name field. Those should both say username. Um, or maybe I shouldn't have this thing called user token. I used to just call this cookie the ID cookie, and then Debo thought it would be better to call this the Relay Chess Session ID cookie. Um, I don't know why. I guess it's more explicit that way, but and less likely to collide with cookies from other sites or other utilities or something? I'm not sure. Um, there's things I don't understand, that's for certain. But yeah, this is less ambiguous, so that's cool. Um, so what do I do here? Um... 
I might try to parse those attributes in the relay chest service handler. I wonder. Um, so, if we have a user token, attempt to parse it and extract the attributes um, name and display name, and then set anonymous user to false. So, yeah, I should see this in my console. Um, let me take a look and see what I observe. Oh, you guys can't see my browser console because I haven't docked it. How do I dock this again? Dock to bottom. All right, so you can see this now. Um, I just care about what's in my console. And that's somewhere here. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's some Chrome funniness with how your audio service needs you to interact with the page before it can play audio. Google's changing how that works, which is exciting. Um, unless you're a web developer. So, I don't see this logging my user token. Should I not see a user token somewhere here? Actually, should I just force refresh the page? Can I clear this console? and force refresh the page and we see user update, seek update, active game update but I didn't ever see anything in the way of like this console log statement with regard to the app factory so why is that user token not being logged like I would expect null or undefined oh there it is undefined there it is that's what I was looking for it was grayed out so it is logged it's definitely logged um, so the next question is um, I took this attribute out of local storage Um, <laughs> so how can my socket know who I am? It must know somehow. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Sorry. Uh, you can check your local storage. Oh, that's right. Yeah, go into the storage tab. Alright. Yeah, I have done this before in troubleshooting stuff. So you can see like there's my Leeches username or ID username. Oh that's cool. Undefined is my Leeches user ID. Um I must have done something stupid in my app.js that populates that cookie. We've got our session ID and we've got our user token. Um, yeah, I'm thinking the fact that I'm not populating something in the same way has something to do with this. I apologize if I'm jumping the gun here, and I know I am, but um, how how did I miss the mark so wide on this? So I was able to find uh, the user in my database user thing. Like leechus user dot id is definitely the attribute, and yet it's undefined. 
I need to take another look at this API and see what I'm doing wrong here. Because um, I'm doing something wrong. Expires 1969. No, I mean, that... I establish these cookies in a way that they or stuff I did in a way that does not expire um, which might not be the same thing that you were looking at a minute ago that could be an entirely different thing too we could have lots of stale or non-expiring data um, so let's go to github Ornick Harlila, which should bring us to the API description somewhere. All right, here's our Leechus API reference. Good gravy, it's all white. Um, all right, so where do I go? I'm searching for authorization. OAuth, yeah. So, API account. Wait, I'm not doing an account, I'm just authorizing. Like, my. Am I doing this? No, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, I am requesting account information. And that should include an ID attribute in the response. So, certainly we got username back, we got title, I certainly imported things correctly this way. Um, what's, how am I this dumb? How is Leech's user dot ID evaluating? Oh, could it be that I've created this user but not set their ID? Or am I just dumb? Like, no, in fact, this Leech's user ID is. I'm getting that directly from the Leech's user object which is the result of the uh, waiting is what am I doing wrong here I think await is like thread dot join in that we're waiting for the result of this and the result gets populated into leechus user and it has these attributes like username and ID that's not something I'm populating. That's something I'm getting directly. I could even log this, and that's what I should do. Um, so, um, hmm. I shouldn't need to do this, but it doesn't hurt. Uh, console.log. Leechus user dot id. Oh god, I see the bug. The bug is that I call this capital ID later on, like an idiot. Um, but later on when I go to construct the user token, I do use lowercase id. All right, so that's that mystery solved. That's how I failed to get the leechus user ID set in the cookie, but it's probably set in the base 64 whatever kind of however this is constructed and set inside its thing. Um, I thought that was a base64 encoded something or other there. It looked cryptic, whatever it was. This um, user token. But, um, no, I mean, yeah, it's got the leechus user ID in there. 
All right, so I know I'd added those additional properties um, just in case I need them. Uh, so what did I change? Just the, oh, lines of code that weren't even committed to begin with. So that sets the user token in the cookie and sets its attributes name and display name accordingly. And then this... Oh! Wait, does JavaScript need semicolons? Because we're missing one here. I don't know. I'm going to add it. You can never have too many semicolons unless the language doesn't support them. Um, regardless, this logged undefined, I am still confused as fuck how local storage would fail to include our cookie. I don't get it, but um, it's one of life's great mysteries. No, I don't know. I'll have to figure out how to get visibility to stuff from the Angular app. Um, one solution would be to have a redirect um, after login that redirected to an Angular target, but that really shouldn't be necessary. What even is local storage? I believe it's browser storage. What is App Factory doing? It's constructing an instance of the application, the Angular app that runs client side, that's capable of processing socket events, uh, connecting with the socket server. So that's what that's about. Um, so, oh, but what is local storage, the parameter taken by the function? As in who calls the factory and how, no, um, if I'm understanding that right. Does Angular populate that? It should. Uh, Angular documentation, I think, mentions that you get this for free. Like, if Angular didn't give you at least this much context, um, people wouldn't be using Angular. But, um, Angular App Factory. Because Angular doesn't really, I don't know, I was never that impressed by it. Certainly if I were coding from scratch, I would not select it. Um, I can't type anymore, but... Um, uh, so where do I find the official documentation about this? Um, rather, what am I importing? I am... Of course I'm not importing anything in this source code. Why would I import anything that would give me the context as to what I'm doing? That would be too logical. Yeah, so... I'm just gonna say local storage is the browser cache. The Angular does give us that, but that contradicts what we know. So, I'm not sure what more to say about it. Oh, this is pre-ES6. Okay, like I said, I'm not a web dev, so I don't know that. I know ES6 is a big deal. That's pretty awesome, but... Um, great. Good to know. Um, 
Is there a way we could just like inject Maven into this to make it more fun? Um, but no. That makes sense. In its own perverted way. That gives the appropriate context for me to understand what's going on here. Um, so, that said, should I just say, abandon hope all ye who enter here, or something like that? Because, um, well, so this opens the socket connection to the socket server, and socks away the socket. Uh, into um, the Angular app data object. Um, and what I'm trying to do is identify why um, we think we're anonymous. And it's because user token is not accessible from the scope. Um, even though this is using the same relaychess.mu.com website domain, uh, it's running on a different port number. So. I'm not sure if the cookies are scoped by port as well as by domain. Um, but whatever the case, this uh, user token thing is not populated in local storage. If I can't communicate the cookie information through local storage, I could. It would be the worst hack ever, but I could start embedding this data into the DOM itself through root scope, but that shouldn't be necessary. Um, but on the other hand, like that user token really should be set. Because... Um, we're seeing that as part of the authorization. Um, so obviously we have to reach out to leech us to authorize, but upon returning, um, we create our user and our database and then populate these cookie attributes and then redirect back to um, our base URL. Um, having provided all these attributes which get stored in cookies. The most critical of those being the session ID, which is not exposed to JavaScript because theoretically some JavaScript could be malicious and could leak the session IDs and people could spoof session IDs of other users and just be horrible. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of things we could do to better secure that, but I shouldn't have to go there, is the point. Um, but we also see that we're setting this user token. In fact, we did see that in the application cache inside, um, not the Chrome console, the developer console in Chrome. Um, we definitely saw that user token was getting populated. Uh, it had attributes of a name and a display name, although it wasn't so obvious that we had these key value pairs. It wasn't it wasn't trivial to observe um, the key value pairs, but they're there somewhere. I mean, that kind of looks like name and a name, and this kind of looks like a display name, and somehow this string here resolves to all those key value pairs. But there's got to be a better way to pack and unpack that. Assuming, of course, that that's the mechanism I want to use, but either way, we see that this um, is set. It's the key point. It's definitely not undefined. So the fact that we have this thing over here, which is printing undefined, is kind of troubling. 
Local storage is, oh, it's provided by a third party Angular module called ng storage. You might be right. Um, you might be right about that. Ah, I was going to hit the permit thing, but apparently uh, that went through. So cool. Yeah, now I've sent Nightbot away because people didn't like Nightbot. Now we just have GoToLeisureBot monitoring the channel. Evidently it's not doing a very good job at link blocking. I was going to type the permit command to allow you to do that, but, um, but that's okay. I'll have to look into why GoToLesherBot didn't shoot in that case. Perhaps I've already added you to the regulars list, I don't remember. Um, so I forget if I've got ng storage defined or imported. Um, Although, uh, I would hope so, because, like, I didn't write this part of the code. So, you'd hope it would do something sane, but... Yeah, I've... It would be crazy if I didn't have that. Oh, okay. There I am using it. Cool. And... Oh, I see. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I whitelisted, if I remember correctly, I whitelisted GitHub specifically. So people who link to it don't get, like, banned instantly. If I remember right. Because um, there's not a high potential for exploit there. Yeah, so there it is. There's ng storage. Oh, pardon me. I'm struggling to stay awake here. Um, yeah, it's definitely there. Ah. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Cool. Good to see the go to bots on top of things there. So that means all the time I spent configuring that was not in vain. It actually does kind of work. And the idea is that that's, um, that bot is based on phantom bot. Rather, it is phantom bot. And the, potentially, uh, I could expand phantom bot to leverage the leechess API and do cool stuff. But that's another project. So that's not yet happening, but it could happen. Um, so, what have I here? I've got all these attributes. I could just introspect the leech I use. Well, no. It doesn't really matter which of these things I inspect, because they're all values other than undefined. Yet, in the context where I'm trying to access the value, um, in that context, um, local storage is not returning the value. So that's kind of weird. Um, not sure what to make of that. I have to... Well, you did link to the documentation. I can read that in my free time and take a closer look at this, but um, I guess I'll have to accept for now that I can't tell client side whether or not I'm authorized or on a non-authorized socket. And once I manage to figure out whether or not I'm authorized, then I can add a logout button in the case where I am authorized 
and wish to uh, downgrade to a non-authorized thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I was hopeful that, like, it wouldn't just be the Twitch viewership interested in this app. I was hopeful that, like, people who use Angular and GitHub and play chess and all these things um, would also take note of the project. Um, that my publishing the code um, and maintaining it might be enough to draw attention to people who know better than me. And that if I did a decent enough job with my commit messages and comments as necessary, um, that people would take a look at it and ask, like, what the hell? What are you doing? Why did you do this this way? As opposed to me having to go somewhere and tell them, you know, Angular is broken, and then they tell me, no, you're wrong. It's a great way to get help, but... I'm not going to stoop that low. Um. Oh. <laughs> I see. Yeah. That's a fair point. This is Angular 1. Ah! Okay, that's the disconnect. Okay, sorry. I did not realize this is Angular 1. Because I'm an idiot. I'm not, but there's just, I don't even know, like, what it is that I don't know, which is pretty great. Um, yeah, I thought you were just saying that Angular sucked. Uh, I know there are lots of Angular apps, but no, you, this is Angular 1. That's the key. Okay, you're right. Good point. Um, interesting. Okay. Well, that explains things, then. That gives me the appropriate context, because now I'm calling into question just how well Angular 1 works with all the Angular modules we're importing. Um... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything should work. Okay. So all our modules maintain backward compatibility. At least the major ones, the ones that are used by this project. Which, I could buy that at least a handful of modules do maintain backward compatibility. I could believe that. But I can't, I'm struggling with, like, how, you know how, like, there's this big rift between people who are using Python 2 and Python 3, right? Like, the fact that there's two versions of this language is enough to, like, make it very difficult to upgrade from one version to the next. And there's backward compatibility breaks all over the place. Um... You know how Java has taken forever to evolve as a language, and it evolves in very slow, incremental steps. Um, although lately it's been accelerating a bit, and that's exciting. Um, but I guess my point is, like, you're saying they just released Angular 6. This is Angular 1. What kind of, like... How do people maintain modules and expect them to work for every version of Angular? And yet you have a language that's evolving. That I don't get that. How could a language go through six releases and all these modules work for all the releases? That That's what puzzles me. Right. Yeah, Python 2 is finally going to die as it should. Um, yeah, definitely Python 3 is the where to be these days. 
Um, sure. Oh, okay. I see. That makes sense. So it's not that these modules... Okay. Wow, people must have to relearn all this Angular stuff every time there's a release. Like, none of the... The language evolves. It's essentially 6 and 1 are like COBOL and pick your modern language of choice. And I'm sure there was all kinds of backward compatibility breaks in between. So I guess that's why Angular devs are in high demand, despite the fact that Angular's been around for a while. Um, that just keeping ahead of how Angular works is a chore in itself. Okay, that makes some sense. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, no, that's fine. So, here we are on the super exciting stuff. I'll dig through this at some point and figure out why I'm missing my user token. I at least figured out how to do the logging here. So, that's an achievement. But, um... Because, I mean, yeah, I could hack this to say, like, to put all the logic server side for game creation that says users that are authorized must play rated games and users that are not authorized must play casual games. Um, but yeah, Mr. Corrupted um, had a different design in mind here, and I do want to try to abide by that because doesn't make sense to um, have the server trying to make that kind of determination. Plus I should be able to know client-side whether or not I'm authorized because I'll need to know that in order to present the logout button. So I'm gonna have to solve the problem anyway so might as well do it right. Um, but um, yeah logout button, rated games, um, and that's it for this release. And then the rewrite, um, I think I also just have to get through more of the um, functional programming concepts and supporting um, computer science terminology and such. And eventually, once I've done all that, then come back around and see if uh, Mr. Grupt has changed things on me and what it is that we want to do on the, our uh, new application. Yeah, I mean, I, I did do some coding in Scala. Not for this kind of stuff, but for Leech Us, I've done it. I get that I can just jump to learning languages, but it's been heavily recommended that I not do that. But you're right, I could. Um, but I, th I think it'll be more rewarding if I do it the way that people more educated than myself um, are recommending that I do it. And I'm not in any particular hurry to rewrite this. The only reason I was in any hurry and I've been coming back to this over and over is because um, Debo was so gracious as to help me get Olaf to working with this. Um, and I wanted to get this site up and going as quickly as possible as a sign of gratitude to that, and I've just been swamped. But here I am making progress with it, so... Um, So that that's only why I keep coming back to this. Um, yeah. 
it's probably more a matter of trial and error with this code at this point. Um, and again, if I publish this, um, well, yeah, as you say, this is Angular 1. Nobody's going to read it. But people might deploy it, figure out that it's buggy, and then backpedal and figure out how to fix it. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to wrap things up here because I've been awake for 21 hours in a row here. It's probably best that I get some sleep before tomorrow's morning meeting. So, um, yeah, it's been fun. Site works, trademark. Um, so, yeah. Trademark on the word works there, because, you know, it doesn't really work. But it kind of works. It's great. You can play games. You've been able to play against the computer forever on here. That works. Trademark. Um, there are some positions that doesn't handle properly, and that's okay. There's a lot to do. Um, but hey, it looks beautiful. And in working with this, I've developed a better appreciation for um, just the mentality to take at a workplace. Um, and that don't obsess with the UI. Don't let the UI drive every other decision that you make. Make principled decisions. Don't don't let an alluring AI or UI guide you one way or the other. So, anyway, that's been fun. Thanks for watching. Um, if you want to go play on it, all of you people watching the VOD and those of you here live, there's the link. Rating rated games aren't uh, rated yet, but that's probably okay because I want to rewrite the rating system when I go rewrite the site anyway to do a full Glico 2 implementation, and that's going to be pain and a half to do, but it's something I do want to do at some point just to demonstrate that it can be done. Um, so, anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good night. See you next time.